Resident Evil. Hello, everybody. Where is the bongo smash? The X smash? The stun raw? Oh, this is my favorite, by the way. Dribble smash. And the push attack. You will die. Every time. So what do you do when you do not know the way? You, of course, you buy the Chris Bowler Punching Redfields Manual. But guess what? We're not using that manual in the class. We all know what happened to people who use the manual. You are a bread. And we all know what happened to a bread. Brad, stop! Sorry! So now you have no manual, no Akalancha, you're playing on Inferno, and you have to fight this guy. So what do you do? Now the first thing you need to know is that it's possible. There are three things you need to know when fighting Final Boss Nemesis. First thing, timing. Second thing, spacing. Third, knowing his movesets. Now when I say timing, I mean knowing when to dodge his attacks, when to shoot his titties, when to reload your weapons, when to go for the power supplies. When I say spacing, I simply mean putting some distance between you and Mr. Boss Man, as well as knowing where in the arena is your safety spots. You also have to keep moving after every bursting of his titties if you want to minimize acid stuns. Final Boss Nemesis is equipped with about seven kill moves, with two of these moves being optional triggers now I say optional because if you follow the spacing steps in this guide, he will never get to pull them off because you won't activate them. Nemesis does variations on three of his moves and all of his attacks come random. But once you know his movesets, you will know how to approach each one of them. Now there are auxiliary attacks, but those are mostly no damage stuns. And I will be covering these ones as well. I will try my best to give you a complete rundown. But my guide is not the law. If you have a method that works for you, then use it as you may. And for those out there who are going to say, He does not know the way. He's lying. 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 I can't do nothing for you. If you don't believe, you just don't believe. I do, however, use the assault coins on this guide, but really, it is not much of a big choice with or without. It will just take more bullets without the coins. So let's get right into it, guys. Now, Nemesis is a big show off. He likes you to know when he's about to attack. If you listen carefully, you can hear his pre attack grunt before every attack. And if you missed it, it sounds something like this. I don't know what that sounds like. It's a very weird noise for something to make. But I, yeah, uh, let's continue. Now along with the noise he makes before he attacks, comes the anticipation. And the bongo smash. He moves the right arm slightly, but shifts momentum to lifting up the left arm in order to commence the attack. I'm telling you, if you pay attention to these cues, you will be ready for any move that comes next. Now first up guys is the bongo smash. Yeah, the bongo smash is 5 rapid smashes timed equally and a final 6 smash which hits much slower. The initial 5 smashes are not as deadly but are harder to dodge with the 6 smash being easy to dodge but is deadly once it connects. It comes at you quick and nasty but you can dodge it. If you space yourself early on and ready yourself for the final smash, hit that dodge button just when the arm is about to come down at you. And moving forward as you dodge allows your access to the vulnerable titties on the center. And with bullet time, you can take out multiple ones in one go. But don't get caught up though. I recommend shooting two at a time and keep moving to avoid acid stuns. 
as you prepare for his next move. Now there are other ways that you can dodge Bungo Smash. You can lead Nemesis to an area on the arena as long as you are within the range of his final two smashes. He will commit to that area even if you have already left that smash zone. But be warned, this method of dodge does not carry the bullet time. As it is not a perfect dodge, but a natural dodge. It is not the best method out of the bunch because it can lead to unwanted attacks such as the arm sweep due to the fact that you can make a mistake and trigger that moveset. Now there will be a time where you will be caught in the path of bungle smashes and initial slams. For example, you dodge too far near Nemesis and then you need to return to optimal spacing. <laughs> you could dodge it but the problem is you can't really see much of what's going on on the screen so you have to rely on the sounds and then dodge which is kind of you know messy but it's possible just pay attention to the sound of the arm smashes and dodge when you hear your interval is approaching you should be alright this next example is a little bit extreme it may never happen to you in your run it happened to me when I was doing a knife run you know I know what you're thinking oh my god man that looks sexy as hell though nigga guys please listen to me here I know I know it looks sexy. Do not do this, please. Just remember to keep your spacing optimal. X gon' give it to you. Now the X smash is a simple attack to dodge. If you can dodge the final smash of the bungo smash, then you can dodge this one. Once you see Nemesis crosses his arms, Prime yourself and prepare. You want to hit the dodge button halfway through the descent of the attack. Rolling forward and accessing the titties. Now another way you can dodge the X smash is by simply running into him as his arms come down. Remember when you dodge this way, you do not have the bullet time. Oh Nami, I love it when you bass so hard it shakes up the place displacing my dispositions. I love it how you captivate my trigger responses that I cannot fit in movements. As I rage, create my controller into demise and inputs. Final boss nemesis, you are the chef in this kitchen. You may now finally have your way. A way towards your Jill sandwich. Sigh! We could dodge that too. Now there are two ways to deal with the stun rod. When Nemesis does a pre-attack grunt but does not seem to be making any strong moves with his arms, a stun rod is coming. You want to hit the dodge button a half a second after he runs. He will dodge the stun entirely and even though this dodge does not carry the perfect dodge bullet time, you will have ample access to his titties if you shoot right after you come out of the dodge animation frames. This is a perfect time for you to maximize damage on his titties as well as reloading your weapons if you haven't before. Now if you dodge too early or too late you will get stunned but it's not the end of the world. If you are stunned wiggle your joystick or mouse Hitting the Xbox triangle O. I don't know what you guys use on PC, but hit those buttons up because God, your life depends on it. And as soon as you can move your character, you want to ready yourself for the next attack, which is going to most likely be the dribble smash. So I recommend avoiding the stun entirely if you can by dodging to avoid the extra attacks. The Dripple Smash. <laughs> now, the Dripple Smash is a really double but mostly triple set of smashes that come with variations in timing. Once Nemesis quickly moves the right arm up in the air, man, get ready. 
This move is random and consists of a rapid right arm smash, a slower left arm smash and either a slower or faster final right arm smash in case of the triple variant while there is no third arm smash in case of the double variant. The double variant mostly happens when you come out of a stun raw. It can happen outside of that circumstance, so be careful. Pay attention to the pre-attack cues and ready yourself. You want to dodge when the arm is about a third of the way down on the first smash, about like 4 frames in or so, and then ready yourself again to dodge a second time when the arm starts to come down at you. And finally prepare to dodge the last smash when the arm is starting you know, to come down at you again. The dodging window of this move is very slim. Okay, this move is deadly and tests your focus. And muscle memory will become your worst enemy here as the first two smashes follow the same timing pattern with every dripple smash, with the final smash having variations in timing. Simply pay attention to the arm movements at all times and react accordingly. Fury Smash! The Fury Smash is by far the gayest smash that you're gonna get hit with. Once Nemesis pulls out the left arm slowly towards you, clench your cheeks, and I mean all of them. Ready your dodge finger and hope that your controller is fully charged. Okay, man. The smash comes down with multiple hits, sometimes be it 5, 6, 7 or 8 smashes with the first 4 smashes always landing at the same timing but only a change in timing when it comes to the smashes 5 through 8. The number of smashes after 4 comes all at random and you must focus in order not to get muscle memory locked. Once his arm goes up after a smash, you want to wait for the moment his arm is about to come down again to hit the dodge button. You must focus here guys, especially after the fourth smash. When his arm goes up and pauses, there will only be a final smash that follows. The arm sweep is an optional moveset that triggers if you get near or run past the double vertical lines on the field. Basically anytime you get close to the power supplies, he will sweep you. When Nemesis leans and quickly moves an arm to either the left or the right power supply stacks, you about to be melee rocked to death. His initial swipes depend on whichever side you are currently standing at. If you are at the left, he will swipe right, left and then right again, followed by the dribble smash. If you are at the right, he will swipe left, right, and then left once more, bringing in the Fury Smash. Because this attack is followed by secondary attacks such as the Fury Smash and the Dribble Smash, I would recommend you avoid this one wholeheartedly. When dodging this move, it's best to run into the arm that's coming at you if you're near it. The time to dodge is very tight here, so you dodge just when the arm is about to hit you. If you dodge the first arm in the direction past the line into the power supplies, you will be out of range for the second arm swipe. Bullet time some titties. And remember to not forget the final arm swipe and the secondary moveset that follows. <laughs> oh, sorry guys. Ammo and safety. So you come into the pre-fight with not enough ammo to no ammo. But don't worry, the game's got you. You get ammo on the left and ammo on the right. I usually bounce to the left side from the real gun. Okay. Pick up the ammo one, two, three, four. Move back to the right side. Hitting the initiation on the real gun. While it's initiating, I move to the right side, pick up the ammo there, right? Move back to the real gun and start the match. And I usually do that all in one sweep. All in one sweep. Easy. Okay, guys? But one thing I need you to focus on 
and then you should worry about see that this guy right here he can do this and ruin your run be like man i'm gonna smash the thing. i'm gonna smash you man i'm gonna smash you he's gonna get hyper he's gonna try to smash you okay it's all right we got this stay calm remember to keep your camera on him every once in a while because he can freak out and he can hit you now there's areas on the map like right here you gotta be careful these areas are deadly whenever you step into the red zones here past the five line vertical line he can hit you from that area the only fine place i find that's safe is right there in front of the real gun so guys as you're doing this just be careful know that you can get hurt Oh, uh, optimal spacing, guys. Look, when you're fighting Nemesis, there's places on the map that are optimal, all right? You don't want to be right here fighting this guy. You don't want to be right here fighting him. But, um, I'm, 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 but I'm, I'm, I'm a aficionado. I, I can fight this guy, man. No. If you stand right here, you're going to be seeing only meat. Nobody wants to see this, guys. What are you looking at here? Look at this. This is not a pleasant view. I can't see nothing. Who wants to stand? Nobody wants to stand here. So you'll be like, where's the optimal spacing then? My friends, it's right here. Or right here. Because you stand right here, guess what you're looking at? Sexiness. You could see the whole scenery. You could see his other, you could see where he's at. When his hands comes up in the ear, he's going to be like, I'm going to snap you, bro. I'm going to hit you with the knee. You can see him. You can see everything he gets to offer. He puts his hand up. You got this fool. He doesn't have anything on you. Because you have optimal spacing on your regards. Okay? You know what I mean? That was me. I'm in a way here. I can lick you. I'm goosey. Goosey, 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 goosey. I got my small hands. Got some small hands here. You know? Got some more small hands here. No, I am scary. I got some titties, some titties, some titties, titties, some titties, titties. I am scary. No, you're not. You're not scary. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so yeah, guys, know you what, know where, know where your optimal space is, guys. If you stand right here, most of you stand around this area, you are safe. All right, guys, safe. Get your ultimate spacing down, and you should have a good fight. Another big advantage to the ultimate spacing is that you can completely eliminate one, well, two of his optional movesets, okay? Now, you, when you're fighting him, you know what I'm saying, you have your optimal spacing down. But sometimes you might make a mistake, and uh, of course, you're going to eventually naturally radiate away from your optimal spacing area. And that's good, because you have to dodge and you got to move around just to, you know, avoid the damage stunts from the... Uh, the assets so when you're done with that lad come back home come back home all right that's where you're safer that's where you can see everything that's where your scenery is pure you know what i'm saying so but let's just say man ain't nobody gonna listen to this guy man this guy you know he's dumb man this guy's a <laughs> yeah of course of course guys and then you want to run up here <clears throat> i'm gonna fight him up close right you're gonna deal with some meat right so yeah that's you that's the way you want to play but are you also prepared for this every time what, what are you talking about man what are you talking about well it's a push smash pull move why do i call it that take a look for yourself so you're coming up towards him right it's gonna push at you huh dodge it right of course it could be dodge everything could be dodge and he smashes and he pulls back no body in the world wants this move he's gonna push at you like an abusive relationship right He's going to smash down again, and he's going to pull you right back. Nobody wants that stuff. We stay away from relationships like this in our daily lives. Guys, if you practice your safety, your safety distancing, you should be all right. So guys, we're done with the push, smash, pull attack. That's out of the way now, but it's not one we got to worry about. This one gets triggered if you hit the five vertical lines. You get over the five vertical lines, it's going to happen to you guys. So, yeah, of course, you're fighting this guy. If you don't really pay attention, yes, you can venture outside of these lines by mistake, right? But you have to keep yourself conscious on this decision. If you realize you've got over the line, please run back. Because you, you don't want to 
pull this move, especially if you're on the right side. You don't want that. See, guys, if you can stay within this line, this line as best as possible, you're good. But, you know, for those guys who be like, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna jump over here. I'm gonna just uh, get some ammo, you know, real quick. Uh, uh, you know, uh, let me, let me, let me get some ammo, man. Let me get some ammo. Okay. Okay. Yes, get your ammo, but you're gonna have to deal with this guy. And who's this guy? Watch what happens, right? I dodged him. Look at what I made a mistake here. I dodge him, but I end up in his uh in his grasp. Whenever you go over these line guys, know that this move is coming. Okay? And we can dodge the arm sweep. And that's not the problem with the arm sweep. We can dodge it. It's a dodgeable move. But here's a problem with the arm sweep. It triggers another move of itself. In this case, it's dribble smash. If you go on the left side, it triggers a dribble smash. If you go on the right side, a few smash is coming you. You see what I'm saying? The last move is the best for us, guys. If we can minimize the difficulty of the fight, we can get through. We can get through. Going for the power supplies. First thing first, this last. This one first. This one second. You put this one first because it's farther back. As you fight Nemesis, he turns red. It becomes harder for you to get it at the end. So go for it first. Get that one first. This one second. Pop that one last, okay? Easy as that. Quick, quick, quick. All right? Next tip. You're going for this power supply here. You want to save the titty that's on the same side as the power supply you're going for. For example, this is the right side power supply. So I'm going to save the right side titty. I'm going to save it for last. I'm going to run up towards the power supply. As I get close to it, I'm going to pop it. Okay? Look at that. And pop. Easy. He's just about to get into his drop in animation. But I'm already heading towards the power supply. Look how fast of a time I'm saving here. Okay? I make sure I grab my power supply on point. Okay? Nothing. He's coming back up. It doesn't matter. We have time. You know why? Because this arm, as long as you see this arm on the floor as you're going... Back to the optimal spacing. You have time. His end is going up. He's doing the up animation. He cannot hit you when he's doing the animation. Okay? It's easy. So let him do his job. Let him go up. And you breeze through. Easy as that. Ready for the next move. Quick. Alright. Next example. We have the top one, which is this one up here. Right? We go for this power supply. This one. But we get this tete on the same corresponding side. We're on the left side, so we save the left side tete. Alright? What we want to do... Exact same stuff we did down here. Slightly different, but exact same stuff. We're going towards it. We duck him. He's going to bump me, hit me with the, the, the bungo smash. But it doesn't matter. We popped it. Stopped his um, attack. And we popped for the power supply. Quick, 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 quick. Easy as that. Run towards it. Pop it. And then run for the power supply. Nothing to worry about. We just watch him drop. Bam. Dead. All right. Next one. Same thing. Same, same angle. Same position. But different, different scenario. We want to go for the tete. He's about to hit me with that. Just dodge it. It doesn't matter. Oh, wait. But you're going into the arm sweep territory. Why would you do that? Well, guys, it's, we're planning it, man. We, we, got, we got this. It's our plan. It's part of our plan. We run in there. We bait him. He pulls out his arm sweep. Just as, as about he's about to hit us. We pop it. Okay, no damage done. No damage frames, guys. None at all. You see that? And all you got to do is run for the power supply. Easy. Check it again. He's about to arm sweep. Pop it. <laughs> Power supply. Quick and nasty. Watch him drop. Quick stuff, guys. All right, guys. Nice little tip I'm going to give you guys. Let's say, for example, you guys are standing near the five line and his tete is over here. All right? The last tete. Okay? Now, let's say you pop this tete and now you want to make a run for this power supply in the back. Well, to be honest, you might try to make this run, but here's a problem. His arm can be coming down and you can get hit. You see what I'm saying? You can ruin your run. You see? Now, you might you can get hit and die here. You know what I'm saying? You can get hit and die. Or you can like, be like, okay, his hand is blocking me now. So let me run all the way to this thing. Yeah, so by the time you, you make it back here, his hand might already be up. And then he might be already settled, and then he can grab you, and then he can one kill you, and making his real sandwich. You know what I'm saying? Or 
you can uh, you can make it back, and then he hits you with another move before you can get to optimal spacing. You see what I'm saying? So the best situation, the best way to handle that situation is if you are if the tete is last is on this side, you want to be on the corresponding side, right? You want to be around here somewhere. You pop it. Then all you gotta do is move your booty sweetly to, you know, power supply, press it down. By the time you make it back, you're safe and he's just recovering from his, his stun. You know what I'm saying? Easy. Alright guys, it's been a journey. And I appreciate you guys for being in the audience. Thank you for watching. And I hope this guy has helped somebody out there, you know? You no, know, this guide is not the law. It's just things that I've put together that I realized that works for me. It might not work for you. You might be a G at the game. You know, you might not need no stinking guide. I, I feel you, man. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know you're good. You know, but for the people out there who don't have a guide, hopefully this sheds some light on you, you know? And for those out there who are going through stressful situations, especially in these times, I wish you the best. I wish your family the best because I know how tough things can be. Just remember to keep your strength moving forward. Let nobody break your stride and stay beautiful, you know? You know what I mean? You didn't do the move. You didn't do the move. What you talking about, man? You gotta do the move. The push pull move. I'm not doing that move. You gotta do it, man. Uh, I guess, okay. You dodge here. You pull back to him, okay? Wait for the hand to come down. And you dodge again. Okay. Goodbye, Mr. Vegetarian. Alright, guys. Like I was saying, thank you so much go out there and win we all in this together all right so capcom thank you for remaking this game i've never had a chance to play resident evil 3 before so thank you for the remake i mean i wish it could have been a little bit better something's missing but at the end of the day i know you guys are gonna do better next time right yes so guys thank you so much i'm sorry for using your music i i'm gonna credit to you in the in the description i'm sorry kept kind of your music is good music you know so i just add them in the, in the game so i put it in the video sorry please don't send the fbi on, on my back please yeah so guys thank you so much i have also posted the a full fight final fight of nemesis final boss if you want to watch it in front of run it's at the end of this uh this section so yeah that's it there's nothing else more to give you know guys thank you so much for being a company one love and uh, stay blessed.
Good riddance. You, all right? On this side right here, you have pistol ammo, all right? Left side, right side, pistol ammo. No, I started the real gun. You boost to the left side. I usually go to the left side. Pick up ammo here, 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 and here. Oh my God! Boost back down to the. <sighs> messing this up, man. We messing this up. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm gonna get fired. I'm gonna get fired here, man. Fired. I'm gonna get fired here. Let me tell you something. I'll talk to you real good and real nice. We're about to get fired here. But it's okay. Because we're the boss. Worry about it. Worry about it. Oh, man. <coughs> oh, man. Ugh. Ew. I'm just gonna get some ammo. Ammo is good. Uh. All right, dude. Alright, do what, do what you wanna do. Get, get your ammo. Get, get your ammo, buddy.